This week, a bit of an RV industry update. We're gonna talk about the RV industry's outlook for this year. Plus, we're gonna talk about that whole grand design frame flex thing and some changes that they've made to their warranty, the changes at Campendium that we've been talking about on our news videos and more. Plus, what is your perfect day at a campground? We asked you and you answer. This is RV Miles. Welcome to episode number 322 of RV Miles. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two RVers who, along with our three kids, have been crisscrossing all over North America on one epic road trip since 2016. Here at RV Miles, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from industry news to travel destinations, our national parks, and a whole lot more. If you watch our weekly, sometimes more than weekly, sometimes less, news videos, you know that there's been some things going on. Uh, that we wanted to talk about in a little more depth here on the podcast, uh, particularly with two companies that had sort of made some changes or had some problems and have really walked some issues back based on your feedback. They're actually listening to you. So the first one being Grand Design. So there's been this thing going on. If you haven't been following it, that's totally fine. What rock have you been <laughs> under, though? And can I join you? you? Know, it's weird because we cover RVs. Uh, a lot on those videos, the new RVs, and uh, a lot of people just own their RV already, and they don't care at all about <laughs> RV manufacturing in any way mm -hmm. whatsoever. But um, Grand Design used to be really well known when it was independent as uh, a company that really stood behind their product. Whether their product was better than anyone else's is debatable. Uh, I think a lot of people felt it was. I think back then i didn't i think i saw a lot of we we both saw a lot of full-timers using grand design products it was very popular for full-timers uh in particular when we started out RVing yes to be in grand designs and we saw a, a fair share of issues with with a lot of them this not more than anybody else um but about the same you know and I, I think that that reputation of being like better than everybody else may have been a little unfounded but Everybody always said that they were really good about standing behind their warranty. That if you had a problem, even if you're out of warranty, perhaps Grand Design was really good about taking care of their customers back then. But then they were bought by Winnebago a few years back. And the perception has been that their uh, their ability to stand behind their warranty has changed. And I, I have no idea if that's real or not. Um, I think part of that just is more and more people are on with social media. More and more people are talking about these things publicly. More and more RVs have been sold over the last few years. And a lot of manufacturers struggled with a lot of issues, including keeping up with service, especially at dealerships, you know, lack of technicians, all that sort of stuff. I've certainly talked to several RVers recently who have said Grand Design has really taken care of me and they've gone above and beyond. And We've definitely heard from others that, that don't think that. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So Grand Design uh, has been caught up in this thing where uh, especially big fifth wheels have been having this issue where the frames, they may be flexing out of spec, like flexing too much. Uh, and the box of the fifth wheel is separating from the frame. It might not be a frame flex issue, actually. We always call this frame flex, but it actually might not have anything to do with that. It might be the attachment of the fifth wheel to the frame. There are, who knows? Nobody knows. There are lots of different issues. In fact, it's probably all of the above. Um, and that's why nobody knows because one person has this problem, one person has this problem, and you don't know what the vast majority of people are really having without all the data in front of you. Mm -hmm. So Grand Design was slow uh, to, to respond to this. We talked about this a bit on the podcast a few cough, weeks cough. ago. Wow. Slow is definitely the... Yeah, well, the I mean, I, th I think the right way to put it there. I think their perception <laughs> was uh, was that this is an industry wide issue, and they are a uh, a popular manufacturer, and they're kind of getting the brunt of it. Uh, I don't know if they're right in that fact. I don't know at all. Uh, but in, in response, what they did was they extended the warranty on their frame to a five year warranty, which is pretty much more than 
anybody else. And a lot of customers were like, well, that doesn't really help us because we bought this used. Uh, or we want to sell this and it doesn't help us because it's not transferable to another customer. Mm -hmm. Their one-year warranty at Grand Design has always been transferable. That's not the case at all manufacturers or even most. But Grand Design's one-year warranty, their sort of standard one-year warranty that a lot of RVs have, was transferable. But their structural warranty, which covers the walls and the frame and all that sort of stuff, was not transferable. Uh, and that was a three-year warranty, I believe. And then they added on this five-year frame warranty. So it doesn't cover the walls and the slides and all that sort of stuff, but it covers the frame itself. And people thought, well, it's not far enough. And a lot of people commented on our videos, on other videos, they reached out to Grand Design. Uh, and, and frankly, I think what I've been hearing a lot of too is that a lot of dealers were not wanting to accept some of these as trade-ins because the values had been dropping whether the whether they had any issues or not the perception was if you bought a grand design you could have some frame issues and I, and that scared off some buyers so grand design has now gone and made their five-year warranty and their three-year warranty and their one-year warranty all transferable which weirdly uh out of through all of this makes them i think the best warranty in the business I mean, there are like niche brands like Lux fifth wheels that are, you know, like $300,000 that you might get a better warranty on. <laughs> you better get but a better like, warranty. From the main manufacturers, I, I think theirs is the best in the business at this point. And, uh, and that's because that's because y'all spoke up. And I think that's a, that's a really incredible thing that we as the consumers have a lot of power right now, which is, um, I talked about I talked in depth about this a little bit on my last news video. I don't want to get too much into it, but like just before the pandemic hit, I was talking about how I thought the RV industry was really beginning to focus on quality mm -hmm. because a lot of them were made, they were they were like building rain bays in their uh, plants and they were doing you know full inspections of every unit that came off the line, which doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> didn't happen then doesn't necessarily happen today where they actually look at every single unit that comes off the line they may some of them do certainly but a lot of manufacturers just pull one of every 10 or whatever it might be and go through that right which is sounds like a recipe for disaster for something that costs you know almost as much as a home or sometimes more than a home <laughs> sometimes more than a home i think a really important word that you've used a couple of times while you've been talking is the word perception yeah and if we're talking about grand design specifically in the beginning the perception was especially among full-time families uh this is a great rig for full timing and this is a great rig with a warranty they built a really really strong perception of customer support and what happened, I think, for a lot of people is there's this level of disenchantment that has happened now because push comes to shove when the big stuff starts dropping, when these are, you know, we have called it frame flex frenzy in the past. And it that's what it is. And I I personally, I blame Grand Design a little bit for this becoming a frenzy because they did not get in front of yeah. this when it first started. They should have gotten in front of it when it first started. These letters now that have gone out to owners, these changes that they're making, the amount of hits Grand Design has taken before this stuff has started to happen, I don't know that that needed to happen for them. I do believe that they were hoping they could sit back and stay quiet and that these things would just roll right under, the, you know, just water <laughs> down everybody's back well, and, and we would and roll they're, out. They're, they were purposefully trying to push things under the rug. I mean, let's be honest. There, there, there were documented instances of them buying back units from people yes. and in that buyback agreement they would have to sign a, a non-disclosure agreement to get their unit bought back and in in that it would require them to take down any youtube videos that they might have put up about the issues that they had and not talk about the fact that grand design took care of them so part of it i think is too like they're not allowing people to tell them that that right. they were taken care of. So well, and is that a common business practice across like any industry? Sure. Who doesn't yeah. love a good NDA? Yeah. Like sign this NDA, everything's gonna go away. It's gonna be fine. That is not surprising. It's as I mean, this is a yeah. massive company, right? They have yeah. a lot at stake here. I do believe though that they just 
they needed the perception. They that was everything for them. And I don't think that they cared for it as much as they should have when this first started. I think that they believed the base was strong enough. Well, I think perception them. didn't really matter much during these pandemic years where there was this boom and they couldn't they couldn't right. make enough <laughs> RVs, you know. Yeah. So it didn't really matter. So that was to, so back to kind of my point here was that. There was this focus on quality that was just beginning pre-pandemic, and then it all went out the window. The second the the the, the second the, the pandemic was weird because a lot of dealers canceled their orders. Remember when the pandemic really hit in like March of 2020? A lot of dealers in March and April canceled all their orders mm -hmm. because they thought they thought their business was in the trash not realizing that, oh, outdoor recreation was gonna be huge. So at simultaneously, like they were canceling orders, RV manufacturers were laying people off, and then, oh, all of a sudden, everybody's buying all the RVs on all the lots, and we gotta, we've gotta figure out how to ramp up production again. Yeah. And now, I think there's at least the, the ingredients in the air for, for that to be happening again, because these brands now, seriously have to compete with each other. They have to fight for your dollars now, where back then, some people were buying RVs that weren't even the RV that they wanted. It's just what was available. Mm -hmm. Do I think Grand Design is going to weather the storm? Yes, Grand Design Absolutely. is not going anywhere. Yeah. Are they now taking steps to try and right the ship? Yes. This is going to be a much longer healing process for Grand Design than it needed to be. And that is of their own doing. And they have to live with that. But I also think that there are other manufacturers out there that need to take note of what happened Absolutely. over here. And they need to pay attention. You cannot ignore the consumer. You cannot ignore the RVer anymore. You cannot ignore the power of social media. And I will flip this because I have complained a lot recently about social media, but I want to tell you where social media is its strongest is when it's someone who has no stake in the social media game and they get on there and they bring something to light. Yeah. They're not a content creator. They don't work in the sphere. They don't work in the industry. They are just an average person who owns an RV, who wanted quality for the money that they put out, their hard money that they put into something that they barely got any time with before they were having issues. Those people have a lot of power. They have a lot of voice. We've seen it at Grand Design. We're about to talk about it at Campendium. These people are the people that are really going to control the social media narrative. Yeah, it's a lesson for sure for the entire industry that has been living. I mean, we've talked about this many times as if it's 20 years ago or mm -hmm. more. You know, sometimes it feels like they're living in a world that was 50 years ago where uh, th they're they're selling vehicles in, in a way that is completely different than the automotive industry uh, the, who have who have you know modernized and figured out how to do marketing in the modern day where as the RV industry only in the last few years have started to move away a bit from oh we don't do any marketing at all we just the dealers are it's their right. job to sell the RVs. They do the marketing. I, it's got to be really tough because, you know, you have the power of social media and an individual who, again, has no skin in this game. But the minute, like, blood is in the water, the minute they smell, those sharks are going to be all over it. And so you have to really work hard as a manufacturer. And they are there are a lot of them. We've been really fortunate to have some super great conversations with a lot of manufacturers who are really, really trying. And there are some hiccups like Jason just talked about. We've got to get some people in this industry to realize that it's no longer 1996, which is like 28 years ago or 86 or, or, 86 76. or 76. That is not how business <laughs> works anymore. Okay, Like you don't just, you know, you don't fax somebody when you need something anymore. It just doesn't work like that. You don't put it in the mail and they're going to get it in a few days. It's not how it but works. You, listen, 
and I'll, I'll say this every time we talk about quality in the RV industry, though, it is on us too as consumers. Mm-hmm. And we're the two of us are just as bad at, at this as everybody else, where you just get excited about the floor plan yeah. and you walk in these <laughs> RVs and you're like, oh, it has like oh, the the kitchen layout is so good. I don't you know, come at me from my got, island. It's got the perfect, you know, the, the kitchen triangle that you're supposed to have. The the, the I can cook a Thanksgiving meal the in here. It's little amazing. features that it has and all that sort of stuff. We get sucked into that. And we need to be demanding to know what's the thickness of the insulation. You know, what do you mean when you say the underbelly is enclosed and heated? Is it just a layer of plastic? Well, all the little details of how the RV is constructed, we should demand those things. When we go buy a when we go buy an automobile, uh, a lot of us get really deep into like the specs of that engine and and all that sort of stuff. We don't do that with RVs. We need to be as consumers more this old house and less house hunters, (laughs) right? Like we need to be more PBS. Oh my God. I used to think it was so boring when I was a kid and my kid, my parents would put PBS on it on Saturday morning. Best. I grew up. We need to be PBS DIY people and not HGTV because there is such a a focus now on like the look, which, Hey, swoops and swirls. I've been saying it for eight years. I can't stand swoops and swirls. (laughs) I love seeing them go away, but I think you make such a good point. We need to understand the workings and we shouldn't have to be an RV tech or someone that works in like a a related industry. But we need to be more Julia Child and less less TikToker (laughs) food recipe (laughs) person. Uh, Yeah, maybe maybe a little less, a little less Bobby Flay, a little bit more. A little more Julia Child. Chances are you've seen them on the road. That's because Blue Ox designs and manufactures the best towing products in the industry. Just look around. You'll find them on highways and campgrounds and anywhere you find people traveling in the great outdoors. Award-winning tow bars, base plates, and brakes. A full line of weight distributing hitches. Adjustable ball mounts and a new line of fifth wheel hitches. With Blue Ox, towing doesn't have to be a drag. To learn more about how Blue Ox can make your travel adventures even more stress-free, visit BlueOx.com. RV Miles is sponsored by Harvest Hosts. Harvest Hosts is a membership that allows RVers to take a rest from the road and enjoy unlimited overnight stays at over 5,100 unique locations in North America. Breweries, farms, attractions, wineries, and more. Easily plan and book your next RV trip and enjoy over $1,500 in exclusive member benefits by joining Harvest Host. Get 15% off your first year of membership with the code MILES. That's M-I-L-E-S. Go to harvesthost.com to become a Harvest Host member today. So that's kind of what's going on a little bit. I mean, we could talk about yeah. this. Yeah. So the the other issue, hours. the other thing was that Campendium, who had sort of really hamstrung the Campendium website by removing the map feature, making it virtually impossible to find a campground in an area, and putting it over on road trippers. They were doing something that they thought was good. They were doing something that the the road trippers users were asking for and it is good it's great for road trippers i'm really really happy that it is there for road trippers that that's i i think that's fantastic that was a smart move road trippers needed to have that evolution and you know i but you can't and so sometimes you you can't take people's security blanket away from them like that that, see you you can't see the forest for the trees Mm -hmm. and uh and they've now walked that back and they they have committed to uh, keeping Campendium a a robust free site to use and uh, are re- returning some of those features here um, shortly. Hopefully yeah. uh, that all pans out and stays the same. And that should be really soon. We got a, a really lovely email from the team over at Campendium um, because, you know, they had clearly read the comments uh, in the news video that announced this because, boy, y'all were mad. And it was swift. And I think they were shocked, but I appreciate this is a good example of what we were just talking about a little bit with Grand Design, right? Campendium saw this. They didn't wait 
for like it all to die down, they listened. This is the lesson perhaps that others are learning now. We have to listen and we have to evaluate. And sometimes you just have to sit back and be quiet and and listen to the feedback you're getting. And maybe it's not what you were hoping for, but in the long run, what is the best, what is best for your business? And for Campendium, it was to go back to having a site that anyone can use and not forcing everyone into the tunnel towards road trippers. Let them come to road trippers on their own. You know, it's no secret. We worked for years and years with road trippers and Togo and Campendium. Like we're very, very comfortable in that world. But even I was like, "Mm -mm, no, don't do that. Don't take that. Like I don't, that's, that's not going to go well. Even as a road tripper's user, I didn't like it. Anyway, yeah. so the entire camping industry, the RV industry is retracting uh, significantly. The camping industry a little bit less so, but it's still retracting some. And it's really starting to put customers a little bit in the catbird seat. Thor Industries just came out with their um, their quarterly revenue guidance, uh, and they have actually dropped their expectations for the next quarter uh, significantly. The number of RVs being sold right now is is decently less than what they thought it, it was going to be three months ago. Interestingly, though, they they released um, what they think the, the number of shipments of RVs is going to be this year as somewhere between 315 and 325,000 units. And that's way down from pre-2023. 2023 was bad. But they're actually projecting at Thor Industries, which is the largest manufacturer of RVs in the world, fewer RVs being produced than the RV Industry Association is, who just came out with their report that was like, it wasn't increased, it was sort of honed in a little bit, the range that they were looking at, but... We'll meet somewhere in the middle, I have no doubt. We'll meet somewhere in the middle. This is, these are still big numbers. Like, let's, let's still look at this realistically. I know that we had astronomical numbers in the beginning of the pandemic and through the first couple of years of the pandemic. These are leveling out normal numbers. This is not anything to start freaking out that the industry is going to, you know, collapse on itself and become a black hole. Nothing like that is going to happen. It's like, getting back to some some realism. I mean, it was, uh, it, it, listen, don't get me wrong, though. Last year was kind of disastrous. But if you just take it as move the, the extras from the previous two years on to last year, that's really what happened. People bought earlier than they intended to. So last I, year... 313,000 RVs were shipped. Thor is expecting about in that same range, 320,000 RVs or so this year. In 2022, 493,000. 2021, 600,240 RVs were built. So, I mean, we're talking half Half of two years ago. I think that this is actually a good thing, too. I think that this will... um, I do think that some of this is... um, It's not just a few people right now who are like hard pass on buying an RV. I was going to buy one, but this frame flex frenzy has really shook the industry. It, it, they may not say it out loud. They may not say it in a press release. They may say that everything is fine. It is, it is shook the industry because consumer confidence is down. One of the most consistent comments we get on some of the videos that we put out covering some of this stuff is. I'm out. I'm I'm not buying. I, I was planning on it, but I, I'm not. There's just too much going on. That's sad because there, there's there's some good stuff out there that you can still get a really good RV. And hopefully now we're going to move on to here to talk about some of the positivity in RV. Well, the joy of RVing is, yeah. is there. And you, I think it's important that as we continue to move forward from all of this, we have a responsibility. Those of us who work in the industry have a responsibility to continue with transparency and fact-based information, but we also have a responsibility to help the consumer heal and to invite the consumer back to the campground and back to our campfire and to spend time with us and to talk about the things that we find joy in. And so as all of this was kind of shaping and coming together this week, and I knew that we were going to end up talking about these two things on the podcast, I really wanted to counter that. I wanted to counter that frustration. And I wanted to talk about some of the things and the reasons why 
we all make this investment in RVing, that we all make this investment to go out and because we know it's not easy. RVing is not always easy. It's like a lot of work. I mean, and now as I'm someone who's not full time in my rig, it's a lot of work. Sure to put everything in there every week. Even if I have stuff in there that lives there, I just got to get humans in it. And that is sometimes in food. Those you know, two it, things it, alone it, are so difficult. The, the same can be said for pretty much any type of vacation. Right. Too. It's like, just, it's packing just for a vacation is not, <laughs> no, is not fun. You need the vacation from the vacation. Especially sometimes. when you have kids. Yes. Or you have jobs or yeah. you just, it's, it's hard, but the reward is so great. And so, I went out and across our social medias, I asked the community, what is your, what do you consider your best day at the campground? So these are a few of the things we had tons and tons of comments here, and it was really lovely to read. And it really filled my cup up with enthusiasm for our upcoming summer trip. You know, we're only about like three weeks or so away from heading out. We're going to be gone for Oof. six weeks. I know. I know. I'm not ready. I'm not, I am so ready, but like, I'm not ready. Like I'm, I'm mentally Remember ready. We were going to record a bunch of podcasts. Oh, we're advance? still, we're still doing that. Okay. We're still doing that. It will happen. <laughs> it will happen. So here are a few things uh, I went through and I kind of divided everything up into categories. Cause there were three real big things that stood out to me that people, when they think about their best day at the campground, these are the things that were really consistently mentioned. And the very first one was outdoor focus, like a huge focus on the environment in which you are RVing. So Whitley wrote a perfect pour over coffee in the morning, the perfect weather that includes a sweatshirt, the smell of the pines and campfires and no bugs. <laughs> no bugs. If you have all that, any activity will be a pleasure. And so this was, again, Lauren says, good weather to sit outside and chill. And then she went on to say, since we left nearly two months ago, we've sat outside perhaps half a dozen times. Today was warm, but there was a nice breeze. It wasn't cold or it wasn't Las Vegas hot. It was pleasant. Weather is such a huge factor in yeah. the in the RV lifestyle. You know, I we've talked a lot. There's been you shared that story on the news video of some severe weather that hit eastern uh, South Dakota. Our RV environment is so tightly strung to the weather and what we're going to experience. And I do believe, though, too, as we get older, we all just get like really obsessed with the weather, too. Like there is I, there is an element of that. I mean, for us, I, I pay think, attention more than I probably should. I, I think it's a thing, too, where uh, so many people RV in different ways. So we we always try to remember this. Like the way that we look at it is different than other people. Some people look at it as just an outdoor thing. They look at it as getting out into nature and unplugging and relaxing. Mm -hmm. I think we sometimes look at it that way. Oh, but sometimes I like all the amenities. I mean, this is But it, yeah, if the weather is bad, it's like, well, let's go to a mall, you know. <laughs> and and but for us yes, a our, mall. RVing is more um I think the prime focus, if there is one for our travels, it is about travel. It's about going to new places and discovering those new places. And sometimes that means doing touristy things. Sometimes it means doing indoor things. To us, RVing can be about nature. Sometimes that's the thing we're visiting. But really, for us, it's about the travel. But that's not everybody. Yeah, we we like kind of a um, potpourri yeah. of... We're like big cities, with, you know, whatever. We like it all. There's not a whole yeah. lot we won't do. Uh, Trish also said, in keeping with the outdoor focus, that cooking outside, hammocks and a book, hike with the dogs. She says that she enjoys solo camping, but if she can have her family with her, that is the best. Top it off with a great campfire. I completely agree. I This comment made me think that I actually would really like to try solo camping. I would like to hook Bexy up you and just even if I, I don't need to go far. I mean, I do want to leave the Quad Cities so that you guys can't just drive over to see me. But I would. I would. Can you come home and make us dinner? <laughs> Mom, where's this? I mean, I'll still get that in <laughs> a text. You'll still get those calls. I'll still get the text. Huh. But I would, I like the idea. And I think, and you've expressed this too, like just the idea that an RV can also allow you the opportunity to have some solitude. Yeah. To go out yeah. and, you know, just take a book, take a hammock, take a bottle of wine, go sit 
out in nature, do some, you know, and for us, we're set up that it could be boondocking, just go boondock for a couple nights. You know, I just think that would be really lovely. Uh, finally, on the outdoor focus, Amy said a great hike followed by a meal cooked outdoors and relaxing in a hammock with a good book and the sound of running water. Oh, I love the sound of running water. at a I love going to no. sleep next to water. Not like too strong of a sound of just there's a there's a right level there's a right yeah. there's a right f- speed of water so that boondocking spot we were at last year the uh, the name is going to escape me i think it was like bars or something it was some in guy's a, name it's some yeah. guy's name it was on, it, a, it, on a river in oregon right? it was uh, it was near olympic like so it's in washington yeah, yeah it was near yeah. olympic it was um, amazing that is a good Allen's bar there you go i Got knew it. you would remember Got it for it. me that is an amazing sound of water. You're yeah. just right there on that river and it is We were also hearing trees fall into the river though. And too. that was fine. It was across the <laughs> it was across the water though, so it didn't impact us. But it's this really that's a beautiful sound. Was I can I counter that with the beach camping we did in Corpus Christi? See where we that was great until we got too that water much was, involved that water with high was tide. lapping our stairs i i have to say though actually i feel the opposite i thought Ugh. that was more relaxing sounding than no it was alan's bar it was it was a very sleepless night because when we went to bed we knew despite all because we had camped at the campground there for a few days leading yeah. up to going out on the beach like where the we tide kept was checking coming the in. tide so despite all of our good efforts um we were still safe uh, but when we got up the next morning, uh, the high tide had visited the like but see, the mat. That kind of stuff to and me. And I was terrified all night long. That's that's memories to me, you know. So that kind that's of anxiety. stuff to me, I I enjoy being able yeah, to tell those you stories. Slept. You know, you snored all night long. I Rachel and I were I like, knew we were fine. <laughs> we were camping with some friends, and we were like, <gasps> and if we weren't fine, we weren't fine. But there's nothing we could do about it. <laughs> If we weren't fine, we needed to hook up and get that, out. There was no hooking up and getting out when the tide was high, though. That's, well, we needed. <laughs> that's why I stayed up all night staring at it, <laughs> telling it not to get too close to my family. Uh, speaking of family, the next like really kind of big uh, swath of comments was family focused. So Larry said, "Quiet, mild temps, beautiful views, and being with the one you love." And I think that's really lovely and simple, like. It doesn't take a lot to make RVing really, really special. You don't need all the bells and whistles. Sometimes you just need that one person that kind of fills your soul and a space for the two of you to exist together in a nice, quiet view. And I I just thought that was really, really sweet. Uh, Melody said, when you know your friends will be there. That is the so much fun. The anticipation, you know, when we knew we were going to see Jamie and Clay and the girls and the anticipation of that and being like, you know what that weekend is just going to be such a good time. Everyone's going to have such a good time. That's I completely agree with Melody. Um, Two veterans on the move said, you know, again, camping with friends always makes it better. Marie said it ends with a big campfire and all your friends and family and then more to explore. We have been blessed to have camped by strangers who became lifelong friends, all because we got to share a happy hour or a campfire. Yeah, I, you know, I'm I'm not the most social person in the world, Uh, but, you know, when you meet somebody at a campground. Um, there's just something about that. Like you just share, you know, a, a time together that uh, sometimes those bonds can really last. Yeah. And we've been really fortunate to have met several people and to have bonds with several families uh, uh, for all of us, all five of us that, you know, I when I left today to come down here to the studio, the kids were you know, on messenger kids with the Armstead kids. And, you yeah. know, they were just, and this is a family that we met in some incredibly stressful situation. And I think that that, you know, really bonds you all together. But now we're, you know, four years yeah. in. And sometimes not. Sometimes you you sit at a campfire with people that 
you you they're interesting and you learn a lot about them and you have a good time and you don't see each other again and that's and on fine Sunday too. you yeah. say bye and that's yeah I think that there's a season for everything and there's seasons for friendships too not every friendship is going to last forever there's seasons for friendships and so but I do think that that is really lovely that they they found that connection um then this final one on family I thought was lovely. Um, it's not something we've ever experienced, but uh, camping with multiple generations of family and gathering around the campfire to share stories of past and present. Nice. I just think that is really cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. we haven't done a ton of camping with our family. Uh, it's not really everyone's thing, or I should really say it's kind of surprising how busy we all are let's be honest we did it once and it was the rainiest floodiest time and we were in an rv and the the, everybody else was in a tent Mm. you know (laughs) buffalo arkansas they didn't didn't do us they didn't do us a good uh another this is the third kind of really big one that stood out to me and this is what this is where it just really speaks to Mm -hmm. my heart is food and drink related the okay so tim says Morning with bacon cooking on the Blackstone. Nate says, nice fire in the morning with coffee in hand and bacon in the cast iron skillet. Todd says, crisp morning with a small fire and the smell of bacon on the Blackstone. Y'all, we really like bacon. <laughs> Even if you do, you're not round. making bacon, just smelling other people making oh, it. When you smell other people cooking bacon and you don't have bacon, you just want to become their friend. There's, Can I just go? Like, do you do you have any? You walk up and you're like, do you have any extra bacon? There is, you know, as full timers, we we didn't do a lot of that traditional stuff as often as people would like to imagine. Like my parents always imagine, like we're having a campfire oh, yeah. every single night. You guys, and, yeah, you guys must have s'mores you know, constantly and, right. and make pancakes on Sundays. And uh, no. you know, we did that stuff, but about the same amount as we would have otherwise and i think uh yeah. I, I think there's just something about a campground breakfast on a uh, on a weekend when you have like eggs and whatever a campground breakfast is to you is to you i will say one of my favorite campground breakfast memories is uh, 2022 balloon fiesta when the Schumachers were there for the first time and we climbed up on I, it was their roof got up on the coog and it was mimosas there were breakfast burritos if I'm remember I mean the amount of food that we just had between our two campsites and the you know, popping the bottles and what and the balloons flying over. We really had a and system you, there for a while of like one family making the adult meals and one family making the we, kids it meals. It was such a solid system. It worked. I miss that because now, <laughs> I've, now I'm cooking two meals and it's it's a struggle. And don't come at me. Yes, my kids do not eat the same thing we eat. And that's by choice because I don't want to eat. I don't want to <laughs> eat the amount cheese. of mac and cheese and pizza that the children want to eat. And they don't want to eat, you know, salads like I want to eat. So it's fine. It's fine. Um, our friends, uh, Rachel and Jesse over at the Taste for Adventure, uh, coming back to beers at the campsite after a hike. Yeah, you just get back and crack a cold one. That is so good. We also, Susan says, getting there safely, then being set up, and then probably having a glass of wine. And Mary, Mary is a woman after my own heart. Mary just says, a glass of wine. <laughs> That's all Mary needs. That's all Mary needs. <laughs> to have the best day at the campground We've talked, is a glass of wine uh, we so you you love your coffee in the morning i do and we tend to love a, a cocktail or a beer or a glass of wine we in, do. in the evening or or earlier um so we've talked a, a <laughs> lot a uh, about a, about doing a book on campground co- coffee coffee and cocktails tm we've don't trademarked it. it don't take it don't, it. don't take it coffee and cocktails tm no. Uh, yes, we have, we should, do we, that. we should do that. Do that. Yeah. Let's add that to the list. Yeah. Let's add, that's one of the things. And actually I had shared, uh, speaking of things we want to do, I had shared, you know, earlier this week that, um, you know, here at RV miles, as we continue to have support from mile markers, that is actually some of the things that are, that that support is allowing us to do. You might have noticed there's been an uptick in videos over on the YouTube channel. You may notice that obviously we're sitting in a studio. Uh, we have been hiring writers for America's national parks podcast. These are all things that mile markers are allowing us to do. And coffees and cocktails TM is on our list of things on the back burner right now that are in development that 
through support like mile markers, we are able to do because we can take that time now. We're not hustling as much. We're not having to take uh, extra freelance jobs outside of RV miles in no, order and, and to pay can, the bills. We can we can redirect the money that we make off of the business back into the business, which helps us yeah. grow and, and put more content out there for you, which uh, is just, I think, better for us and it's better for everything all around. So it's it's been exciting to be able to like continue to build something instead of stay stagnant. And yeah. that's been very, uh, very contingent on the support of Mile Marker. Yeah. So if you would like to see coffee and cocktails come to life or some of the other things we have on the back burner, we would love to welcome you over to the Mile Marker community. You can learn more at rvmiles.com slash mile markers at $7 a month or $70 for the year. And it has allowed us to 100% focus on RV miles and not have to seek work outside of our own small business in order to support uh, this business and continue to grow it. So thank you to those members. Uh, as they are honorable mentions, just like these honorable mentions I want to throw out here before we lay this conversation to rest, a few other things people said too were level sites, not arguing with your spouse. Ouch. That's, that's rough. Uh, plenty of campsite space, polite neighbors, wildlife in the campground. I will preface that she did share a photo of wild horses in the campground, which we have had the pleasure of such an experience. And it is just phenomenal. So I don't think she was necessarily talking about maybe bears or mountain lions or anything like that. Uh, and then finally, uh, Erica says... These are all good answers so far, but I think not being swarmed by bugs is the winner. <laughs> and for some of us who are uh, in cicada land this summer, wouldn't that be the yeah, ultimate? It's weird. They have They're not here yet. They haven't hit here, but they've hit close by. Uh -huh. I saw a news report uh, the other day that was at a, they were at a state park in eastern Iowa. So, you know, I mean, a few miles from us. There are where definitely they were roaring. People on social media right now are starting to at the campgrounds. The they're 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 here. They're coming. <laughs> uh, and look, I'm not going to complain. They're not here yet. That's fine. That's fine. You show up when I leave. That's fine. <laughs> I'm leaving about July 2nd, so you guys can show up then. That'll be fine. You can hang out on my porch. It's fine. Of course, these posts are still up and available on social media. So if you want to go over and you want to feel some, you know, warm fuzzies and and get ready for that summer camping that's finally here, go over and check out all those answers or leave one yourself and help share the the good vibes across social media. More in a moment, but first, this video is sponsored by RV Life Pro. The RV lifestyle is about community, and the RV community is at the heart of RV Life. RV Life recently celebrated the one millionth trip planned with RV Life Trip Wizard, their excellent trip planning tool for RVers. Featuring all the trusted reviews, pictures, and tips from their RV Life campground site, Trip Wizard is often discussed on another long-term RV Life community, irv2.com. RV Life also features several blog sites and over 20 additional RVing forums to serve the RV community. All of this experience and community feedback come together to help create a fantastic RV trip planner and mobile navigation tool collectively called RV Life Pro. RV Life also marked a milestone of over 3 billion miles traveled using RV Life Pro, counting both the planned RV trips and ad hoc navigation with the included RV Safe mobile app. Take 25% off of RV Life Pro with the coupon code RV Miles. Visit RVLife.com and get 25% off with code RV Miles. All right, it is now time to check the level of our tank, sponsored by our friends over at Liquefied RV Toilet Treatment, the No BS Toilet Treatment. They are still giving away a free bottle of Liquefied. You only have to pay for shipping. You just head over to liquefiedrv.com slash free bottle. This has got to be coming to an end soon. They were only doing 10,000. And if uh, last week's like news video is any indication, I think a lot of people <laughs> took advantage of that. Yeah. So if you want to try it out, just head over to liquefiedrv.com slash free bottle. Okay, Jay, what? is in your black tank this week. Well, you alluded to it a little bit earlier, but some of the storm issues that continue to to plague RVers across the country, you can like 
everybody across the country, but there's been some severe thunderstorms uh, recently. I covered a couple of them on the latest news video, but really what I wanted to talk about here was the ability to get out of uh, your RV and get into safety when a severe thunderstorm is coming. When you hear those sirens, uh, you know, a lot of people are traveling to areas where they're not used to this stuff. They don't have tornado or storm sirens and they don't know uh, what to do in these scenarios and they're, they might be nervous or they might not know anything about it. Um, so the, the thing that I really want to encourage everybody to do wherever you're at, at a campground, figure out where the storm shelter is. That campground might not have a storm shelter. Uh, a lot of campgrounds are required to have them depending on their municipality. Uh, and, and depending on what part of the country they're in, they may be required to have a solid building. It may be the bathhouses. It often is. It may be their main building that is the the safe space that you should go to. But you need to get out of your RV and go to that space when when the storms are real bad. Even if it's in the middle of the night, doesn't matter. Because some of these videos that we showed on that last news video, they're mm -hmm. turned over RVs, destroyed, completely destroyed RVs. A, a young girl died from a tree falling on an RV. It's It's serious stuff. And just like if something like that happened at home, you you know, when you want to be away from the windows, you don't want to be on a deck, all that sort of stuff. You, you need to be thinking about that in an RV. You need, to, you need to know in advance, first of all, be watching the weather and know what's coming and and know where the storm shelter is. That If that campground doesn't have a storm shelter, it might be the the Dollar General across the street or it might be something else, you know, figure out what it is. But you need to be in a strong building, not a huge building. Walmart is not a storm shelter, by the way. You, you're supposed to be in a, 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 a smaller space with stronger walls, few windows, if possible, and uh, and and get away from any sort of openings and and all that sort of stuff. But but know where to go. And That's if you important. can, um, really try to check with local weather as well. We've been really unhappy with national apps, uh, I guess is the best way to put it. I know that a lot of RVers, there's a lot of threads out there in groups you can go read. And uh, in fact, over in RV Miles, we've had several um, recommendations along with devices that you can purchase as well, uh, because we got caught in something quite dangerous uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, because... We had a uh, tornado warning, severe thunderstorm warning had expired, or we had believed that it had expired based off the Weather Channel's app. We had believed that things were going to be fine uh, based off what the radar was showing. And I left and things were not fine, not fine at all. I left to go to a doctor's appointment and I, I could see the line and I knew exactly what I was looking at and I knew exactly what was about to happen and I was stuck on the highway and... Uh, got off and got into the lobby of a hotel uh, with seconds to spare before yeah. trees started laying sideways and sirens started blasting and things just went to H-E double hockey sticks all over the place. And a tornado touched down five miles from our house. It, it, so you it, just it, don't that, know. The Weather Channel radar never loads properly. It's crap. It, it, I mean, it was like it was pouring outside and it looked clear on the radar it, it it just it's the worst it's then, the worst app. but then we hope that what we what we did was we started watching the local news and they were nailing it they they, kyle, they were kyle with a c was just he was on fire he was finally in his element he was finally you know it was them and ryan hall y'all ryan on, on hall y'all uh absolutely is an actual meteorologist that has a has a youtube channel and lots of uh, weather watchers with him and does a fantastic job covering severe weather events. Yeah, he's great. Um, I actually turn to him now more for my weather <laughs> advice than, you know, weather channel apps. Uh, all right, Jace, what is in your fresh tank this week? Uh, there's a new campground RV resort uh, in New Braunfels, Texas, uh, an area that we really like near mm -hmm. San, San Antonio Hill Country. Texas is where the Schlitterbahn water park originated. There's a couple of them now. The The family that operates, or the company that operates the Schlitterbahn, they have opened a new RV park there. They actually opened it on the land that they 
used to build Schlitterbahn attractions on. Okay. And it is a 60s themed RV resort. So it is built with sort of newer construction, but with a look and feel of the 60s. What early 60s, late 60s, because those can have two very different feels, do you know? It's very, it's very sort of like. Uh, it's, it's a lot of like mid moda architecture, okay. but like, okay. you know, not, not the wood kind, the sort of like, uh, public architecture kind, the, the concrete in fun forms and stuff like that, okay. the pool shapes, that sort of stuff. And I think it looks fantastic. And I am really interested in going there. Well, it's always good to hear a new campground opening. Yes. So, and it's fun to see some of them getting some good little themes and, and not just sticking with like, this is what a campground they should be. They need to be the same. They don't. <laughs> Variety is the spice of life. All right. What's in your black tank this week? So my black tank is just, you know, hold my beer while I tell you how many years old I am. Um, There's this thing. And so Look, we work in the social media business, so we got to be on all the social media platforms, which means I got to be over on Facebook. I spend a lot of time on Facebook. There is this thing happening on Facebook that's just making me crazy. It's been around for a while, but for some reason, it's really ramped up. I think they did something to kind of really entice people to use it. And it's the at everyone option that pages and groups can now do. It tags tags everybody. It tags everybody everyone that follows you or likes your page and look it's fine from time to time sometimes we got to get important information out there right but it's if it's just because you just put a new youtube video up and you need to make sure i see that youtube video and then you're doing that like several times a week and then i'm getting it from other people several times a week and i'm getting it from groups several times a week i am like guess what When I get the notification that says you and several others have been tagged, I'm not going over there. No, I'm not. No, it's the several others. Is the I'm not going to do it. I'm I'm protesting now. I know we're trying to figure out a way to reach our audience. This is not the way. (laughs) Please stop. I can't stand it. I wish Facebook would remove it. And now I'm done. Uh, See you all over on Instagram. All right. What's in your fresh tank? Uh, My fresh tank is a really fun card game that we'd had for a while, but we just started playing a couple of months ago. And it is called Anomia. Thank you. A-N-O-M-I-A. I I can't ever say the name. And so I'm not going to try, but it's, it's very fun. It's so simple. It's, it's very inclusive. It's like you, um, everyone gets dealt a couple of cards and on those cards are going to, and then you have your, your deck in the center. And then on those cards is going to be a shape and there's going to be a word. Maybe it is type of fish, type of bread, um, you know, type of color. And what you do is you uh, start flipping cards from that center deck from the pile. And if, is that right? Yeah. Am I explaining this right? Yes. And if your card matches, (laughs) if the symbol on your card matches somebody else's card, you have to yell out that thing. So like if it was type of fish, you have to yell out carp. Yes. And you have to be the first one to do it and you you take the match. And I am terrible at this game because this is why we all love it. Because... I can't think of the thing to say <laughs> fast enough. And you might be thinking, oh, this is so simple. And it even says on the box, you're going to think that this is easy and this is going to be so hard. And when you flip the card and your shape is matching someone else's and you're looking at their that saying it type says, of color and you're going, uh, 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 I can't uh, think of a uh, name uh, of a color. And you like, do that you thing just, where you point, you know how we all point. Why am I go, pointing at it? Why am I? I and it's, it's your brain just stops yeah. and it's so funny. It's so funny that you have ceased to be able to even like name a tree you just you can't do it and it's a it's a blast it's a great game to have in your rv it's this not going to take up a lot of, those, of space yeah one of those affordable small rv games just a deck of cards yeah it's over in our amazon shop we actually bought ours at barnes and noble so you could just get it there but we also have it in our amazon shop we have a bunch of, we have a um I guess like a, a section that's all about games that we recommend for rving to have an rv with you and this game is in there it's 
a blast. It, and uh, the reason why we also love card games too, as RVers is because you don't have a lot of pieces that go with a card game, right? Like it's yeah. just, it's just that. So highly recommend it. Lots of fun. Lots of good laughs as you're hanging out with your family at the campground. All right, that's it for this week's episode of the RV Miles podcast. Yes, it is. Thank you so much for joining us. And just a friendly reminder, tickets are still on sale for Homecoming, which takes place October 9th through the 13th in Amana, Iowa. Want to talk about having a good time with family and friends around the campfire? That's going to be Homecoming. We hope to see you there. You can just go over to rvmiles.com slash homecoming to learn more and purchase your tickets. All right, until next week, please continue to stay safe, stay healthy, and keep logging those RV Miles. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.